What do you do if you come across a time signature that looks like this? Or this? I'm the classical nerd, and today we're being irrational. In order to understand what makes these particular time signatures irrational, we must first understand what makes a time signature rational in the first place. We speak of time signatures in terms of their division of the whole note. The notes get their names from these. A quarter note is a quarter of a whole note, a half note is half of a whole note, a sixteenth note is a sixteenth of a whole note, and so on. The series of acceptable rational denominators is exponential, but generally one sees anything from two to sixteen. So rational time signatures are just dividing the whole note into ways that don't fit this exponential pattern, which gives you some odd denominators. So let's take a look at some. This is from Thomas Addis's piece Traced Overhead for solo piano. As we can see, there are two irrational time signatures in place. There's 310 and 25. Let's start with 25. So if 4 4 is 4 fourths of a whole note, which adds up to 1, then 5 5 is 5 fifths of a whole note, which also adds up to 1. But you're not going to see a composer write exclusively in 5-5, because 5-4 just makes more sense. This leads us to the one thing that is probably the most important thing we can learn about irrational meters, and that's that they only work in context with rational meters. You could write an entire piece in 2-11 time, but not only would it work better in 2-8 or 2-4, you'd have people laughing at you. But what about 2-5 instead of 5-5? You're splitting the whole note into five ways, and you're only playing two of them. So if you're writing a piece primarily in 2-4 and then you switch to 2-5 for just one measure, the 2-5 measure is going to be a little bit faster overall. So again, this only means something if the music has a larger context to it. And you might be thinking that the same effect could be coordinated with very precise tempo changes. Sometimes it's more elegant to use these unconventional meters. In the eyes of some composers, irrational meters are just simply a more elegant mathematical solution. With this under about the 310 meter is a little easier to understand. The whole note is being split into 10 tenth notes, of which 3 are played. 10 rounds down to 8, and so 8th notes are used to represent these tenth notes. Rounding down goes for every single possible irrational time signature you can think of. Simply take the denominator and then keep going down until you hit the first rational denominator, and that's going to be the note value that you use. 2 7 rounds down to the quarter note, just as 2 6 and 2 5 do. In the end, irrational time signatures, while they serve a purpose, can still be very mathematically confusing. And this is why they really haven't caught on. Nevertheless, the level of rhythmic nuance they can easily and gracefully bring to a composition means that they're likely going to be used for years to come. Notwithstanding the performers who have to go through complex mathematical hoops just to figure out if they're playing things in tempo. 